Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It is sweater weather day, plus we have the scavenger hunt. So big, big time, right? So let's do the scavenger hunt first, because what you're gonna do is find this in your space and then go over to my Facebook community and share a picture of it. Okay, so we're gonna hunt for pokey turny tools. You know, those things that you use to poke holes in corners of pillowcases or to turn things or whatever. So I have three tools that I use most often. The purple thing, purple thang, which has been around forever, I think since almost since I started quilting, and it does a lot of different tools. I mean, it does a few, you know, a few different things because it's got a square end, it's got something to loop through so that you could feed things, it's got a really pointy end, it's plastic. Uh, I have chopsticks because a lot of us use chopsticks. <laughs> and then I love the pokey tool with the flamingo from my, fan, my friend Bev McCulloch of Flamingo Toes. It's so cute. Gotta have the cute one. So share your pokey turny tools <laughs> over at my Facebook community. If you're not on Facebook, join us. Otherwise, you can leave a comment here in the description box just describing it, but you can't share a picture at YouTube. So, but you know, leave a comment down below. Okay, before we go to the sweater weather, I want to talk about trying to do a little simple border uh, on the uh, Secret Lives of Color. What I had a vision of was a light, a strip, and then another light. And so I got out this grunge, which is a fabric line from Basic Gray with Moda, and it's got a zillion colors, and it's not solid. There's some, you know, sort of like whitewashing or that kind of a thing. So it's got some different tones in it. Maybe you can see that. So I thought that might work. And then I had bought this, and uh, this stripe here because I thought, oh, that, you know, it's got, it's sort of um, basic, I felt like. It would sort of blend across with everything, but to my dismay, it does not. I don't like it at all. So, yeah. I don't know why, but it's just not, that is at least not there. I'm not even sure I would want it for binding. I like the fabric, but it's not working for this. So I thought, well, maybe what I need to do is pull some sort of a green that is maybe a little bit more interesting or a pink, because there's green and pink predominantly used as the background colors. So let me get the other camera and we'll just look at those options and see what I think. So I have a pink stripe. Let's look at this first. So I have this pink stripe, which is more muted, which I like. It could actually just be the binding. I could just do, it wouldn't be nearly that wide, but I could do a strip and then do that as the binding and then just be done with it that way. The other thing I got out was the alphabet print, which is quite an older print from Moda and, uh, I like it. It's used in some of the spacers. It could be just uh, have a little spacer strip in the middle of it. Maybe something that read a bit more solid. And then I, ha I have something else to try that I went digging around in the bins. So I have this uh, another light, which I think is the way to go. Something maybe a little bit lighter. Who knows? I got one more option after this. This is a diagonal gingham stripe, which is kind of cool. Uh, this gives you know, it would just go all the way around. Once again, it could just be binding, but I think it's a little bland for binding. And I don't think it would work over here. I think if I use that alphabet, it needs to be more solid reading, but I think also light. Then I found this green dot. So it's a white with a green dot. And that, that I love, 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 love. I do not have a lot of it. I would have to really think hard on if there is enough to go, you know, all the way around. Uh, it, there is just not much of it. Then I would probably do a green binding, you know, maybe just do this. I don't know if I do another one, but also I don't want the circles to be like all wonky. I kind of like them to be straight, but I could do something really skinny, but that's a lot of sort of fussing around when I think I have less than half a yard. So I will have to think on that one. I also found instead of the grunge, I found this dot, which I would definitely have enough of that to do instead of the grunge to pull that little green dot. I don't know. Okay, so I'm working on it. So that's definitely an in progress thought process. And I might just end up doing a little border of a light and then the stripe binding 
because I just don't know that I have enough of that green dot to make it work. Um, so that just might be where I end up with this, which I'm fine with um, because I'd like to move on. I'd like to get it quilted and be done with it. So I don't want to spend eons designing some fancy border because it doesn't need a fancy border. I was just thinking a frame within a frame would be a nice look. So we will see. Okay, sweater weather. So we're working on a quilt from in here called Halloweenish, but I'm not doing Halloween fabrics at all. Uh, so my blocks, I have a, here is a few of them. Here's a few of them so far. Uh, I'm doing units of two by three like this. And then, so here's a couple extras down here. Let me show you my, I'm going to show you my plan. I'm just going to take it all to the backside and then we're going to go and cut some of the pieces from, with the AccuQuilt, with my electric AccuQuilt that's under the red bin there. So I'll go lay all that out and I'll set up a different camera over there so that I can just run through and show you how um, I do everything. So we're going to go to the back side of the table. I want to talk about the plan, about how I have things laid out, and then we'll do the die cutting. So that's the sequence. So first of all, there are a, you know, a certain number of rectangles and a certain number of squares to make this quilt. So I'm going to add those together because they work as the same unit. So there's 247 of those. Then I have to decide how many weeks do I want to go working on this. So I want to be done by the end of the year, um, not the end of this month because I just have other projects I'm doing. So I don't really, I'm okay with waiting till the end of the year to have it done, but I want to be done by the end of the year. So let's say that's seven weeks. So I'm going to divide this by seven, which will give me 32, 35.2 uh, pieces that have to be done each week. So let's say 36. So I have to have 36 of these sewn each week, and I'm going to count in there sewing them into groupings. So 36 of them sewn into groupings. Now, if I wanted to uh, be done sooner, I would put less weeks. So instead of seven weeks, I would put maybe five weeks and then, you'd be, and then you would have a different number. Uh, so that gives me a number of these that I have to accomplish if I wanna work like that. Now you don't have to work like that. You can certainly just sew at your leisure. You can get done two years from now. Um, however you like to work, you could sew at your leisure and get done in three weeks. Uh, it's, it's really up to you. But if you wanna understand how to make your make it happen, you can say, I wanna be done by the end of the year. But if you don't know how many of these to sew each week, um, whoops, I'm knocking them off of here, then you're going to probably not hit your mark unless you're really sewing on it heavily. Uh, if you're just sewing on it randomly, sewing 36 to 40 of these a week, uh, you're probably not, you might not be doing that. I know that it's a, that sounds like a big number, but they go really fast. You're just doing sew and flips on all the corners. So this is how I set up my work, my work block, because I am doing, I am doing a black and in, in these two positions, see black in these two positions, and whoops, and then a blue in the other two positions, so blue in these two positions. So that way I don't get messed up. And I am chain piecing them. So you can see here that I have gone and done uh, a black corner, and then it, let me lay it down. I've done a, a black corner for everybody, then the other black corner. Then I came through and did the blue corner and the other blue corner. Look at this, look at this, aren't they cute? Look at these little polka dot cats. Ah, <gasps> they're so darling. Um, so anyway, so this now is ready to be pressed because I figure the pressing is its own little thing. So I can put something on to watch and I can go ahead and press. And we'll talk about pressing next week um, because I'm pressing the blue ones to the seam allowances to the inside. So they nest, so everything nests. See the back? So the blue seam allowances are to the inside and the black are to the black. That way, when I'm sewing them, they nest together really nicely. So that is the plan. These I will sew, have in groups. I will then go to the cutting board and just press everything. And then to do the blue ones, I have to repress. But I'll go through that on a different day, on the next week, because um, there's a lot each week to talk about, right? <laughs> okay, after I have all of them cut and have them sewn. Okay, so let's now talk about 
uh, cutting them. So of course you can cut them with your ruler and I've cut some of mine with a ruler. Uh, you know, these are cut with a ruler, some of these, but I wanna show you the die cut machine, the AccuQuilt, and I use the electric one because I think it is worth every single penny. Uh, it is amazing. So much easier than the hand crank. Just a world of difference. Um, okay, <laughs> that being said, there are two dies, and of course this is a pattern, so I'm not saying the die number, but I do have a link to it. So you can go and purchase it if you want. Um, what I have is, okay, let me just first show you this because you can't see what I'm doing and I'm doing this up here. Okay, so there's these empty boxes, basically, that um, AccuQuilt sells. They're, they're blank boxes so that you can put your dies in them. And then what I did was get um, the die, Ugh. What I did was get the, the die out of the 12 inch cube. I didn't take the plastic off yet, did I? No, I didn't take the plastic off yet. So this die is in the 12 inch cube and you can uh, just take it out. That's what I did, take it out and put it in this box because now it's over where I'm working and I don't have to think about it anymore. I just know <clears throat> I marked it on the outside of the box there's little things here, so I wrote on there what's in here. And I've got also the plastic sheet, you know, the protector sheet that you need. Get the, pl the plastic sticks to your hand. Okay, so let me put that back in here so I don't lose it. But here are the rectangles. And they are, um, whoop, they're all ready to go. You're gonna do two, I'm going to do two at a time. And also there's the squares. So this, there's four at a time on the squares. And you use the same number that's in the pattern. It's not anything different. So what I have, I'll just talk about the rectangles because the squares will do the same thing. So if I want to cut a bunch of pieces up with, um, with this guy, so if I want to cut it with this guy, if I was just going to use the whole thing up, I could, start layering. See, I've got some extra flappy things over here, but I would want to press this. So I would want to go and press this, which I'll do then. But I could fold it somewhat. So how many layers? That's one, two, three, four, that's six layers. I believe that that is the best you can do. So if you have six layers, I could actually put this on here and I could trim off this side because then it was not gonna go through anyways. And that would give me all of these. Now this is wider, there'd be a little bit that doesn't get cut there. But I could cut this, trim this, see I'm folding it so I can see them just past, this past the line on the die because I don't want to be too short, you know, so that it doesn't, you know, come out to the edge. I've gotta cover the die. And then on this side, I have plenty of room, so also just, it's not a ton, but it's about the same. So if I wanted to go ahead and cut that part, I can, but I'm going to press this first. So, and then fold it back up here. I can leave the long flappy part. Now, if I can't lay that up here because it's going to roll through and this is too many layers. So it actually has to be removed. It could kind of lay to the side, but sometimes the sensors might not be happy about that much fabric laying off to the side. So instead, I'm just going to trim it off and it doesn't have to be fancy trim because I know it's wide enough. So this will be used for two and a half inch squares. It's perfect for that. Okay. And you want to follow the angle of your piece. Whoops, got to roll that under, got everything under. So I find the angle of my piece, but I'm going to, I'm going to press this first and then we'll take this over and I will refold it onto the um, onto this board over by the machine and we'll run it through. So that's the exciting and the magic is running it through the machine. You start with the Go Big laying down on its feet. You can see here, there it has feet and that's the bottom. And wherever your uh, backside is, that doesn't change. You're going to lift this open, it's going to come towards you. Look at the word AccuQuilt, that should be facing right side up and then you just pull this lever, pull it towards you. You've got it plugged in down here 
and you'll have the light on and then this unit gets plugged in the only hole in the side over there and be sure it's in there good uh, it you know it needs to be pushed all the way in so if you go to turn it on and it's not turning on it's probably that unit if the blue lights on so then you just push the on button and we're ready that's it so I have the die for the rectangles and I've got the plastic that goes on the top and the fabric goes in the middle so I've got first let's just do this one I you know I did I do press it just like you would if you're cutting your regular fabric you want to press it because if you have wrinkles it is going to make your size inaccurate so you should press your fabric and then what I like to do this is just how I like to do it is just lay it down this I feel like you know this saves me time and then I position it so that it's just a little bit over all the edges um, if there's going to be over any overhang I want it to be down here behind me so as I push it in I want that a clean edge on the top so I'd be sure it's come down here a little bit and then I'll fold it over you could do six layers uh, fold it over so that's four and this piece here is extra I mean I can probably get another one out of it um, but not with the folding I don't know I could try let me see I'm gonna just test it where is that edge no so that's too far in I'm not gonna be accurate so now I don't I can rotate it any way I want it can go in any way I want so I will put it with the fabric the extra fabric hanging towards me put the plastic on top and then just push it in you can let it go I usually just hold it down a little bit keep that plastic down and it comes out the back side you just grab it and I will slide it off and I have rectangles here whoop got it tangled up there so I've got rectangles and rectangles there we go so these are you know now the the square one I'm just going to build it on a smaller unit but this gives you an idea of how it goes through and then I can take this extra piece here and either run it right through now so here's the other ones and I could take this and just trim off hold on I can trim off these tails here and if I want I could just you know put the one through with the next batch of things that I'm doing so I will just stack it on top because it is just wide enough I probably would stack it on the bottom and then put my next group of fabric on top of that so like this so that I would have that underneath and then run it right through just another little thing I'm doing here is I am folding up on this edge because I don't want to trim it off in advance I will do that afterwards so I'm just folding it up on this corner which is past the blade the blades right in here so this is past the blade so I'm just tucking that up there so that I can run it through the machine and then I will cut that later into my two and a half inch squares um, you know that way I don't have to pre-cut this I can just sort of fold it up as long as that extra is not on the blades it'll just go through there fine so see it's just on the edge like this and now I can take this and unfold it and press it and I can cut these into my two and a half inch squares because I couldn't really get another one of these out it was just too narrow so there we go that gives you a little peek at how I work with the AccuQuilt to cut shapes a lot of just folding positioning and then zoom you go right through and if you get them all stacked up and you get in a rhythm it really is pretty quick it's very quick <laughs> and then you can take what's extra and trim it down to your scrap sizes so we have here I've got these that I showed you earlier and I have these made and now I have a goal of probably I'm going to try for 40 or 50 of these during the week uh, you can break that down by day if you want like how many you have to do each day <laughs> <laughs> so tell me in the comments below like do you work like that do you set yourself a plan are you going to do that for this I'm really interested I know I'm not the only one but I'm wondering how many others of you want to reach a goal for something and you actually back out like how much you have to be doing every week or every day in order to meet that um, yeah so so today we have again the scavenger hunt you're going to show off your 
um, pokey turny tools. Uh, it is also cappuccino day. Yum, cappuccinos. So if you have never had one, try one today. Today's a good day to try it. So sweater weather blocks. And if you have an AccuQuilt, fire that baby up and cut all your shapes. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.